Well, hello, children, and welcome to another episode of Storytime with Winnie and Nan. And Winnie can't be with us today because dogs aren't allowed on this beach, right? Some beaches, dogs aren't allowed. So Winnie can't be with us today because dogs aren't allowed on this beach. But I'm glad you guys all came. And before we start reading our books today, we want to talk a little bit. What are the things that you need to bring when you go to the beach? Can you tell me something you need to bring? Sunscreen. Sunscreen. So Nan brought along some sunscreen for our trip to the beach. What's something else you want when you go to the beach? Sunglasses. Your sunglasses. That's right. Yep. Yep. So I brought my sunglasses. What else? When it gets hot, what do you need on the beach? Some water, right, some water to drink. So Nan brought along these things that we need when we go to the beach. What's this? A bucket and a shovel. A pail and shovel. And what do we do with this? What can we do with this? You can dig sand up with a shovel and put it in your bucket. Yeah, we can build sand castles, can't we? So I brought some of the things that we need when we go to the beach, but we'll keep them right here. And I also brought with me some fun books about the beach. The first one, has anybody eaten a lobster? Have you ever had a lobster to eat? Yeah. Yeah. Is it good? Do you like them? Oh, I used to, but now. <laughs> Not anymore? Not anymore? Well, some, what do lobsters have on their hands? What do claws. they have? They have claws, and those claws are kind of what? Um, sharp. sharp and pinchy. Yes, yeah, sometimes they're pinchy. Well, this is a story about this little puppy, and he is afraid of lobsters. Imagine being afraid of a lobster. And it's called, There Might Be Lobsters. All right, so let's see what happens. Come on, Suki. The dog's name is Suki. You can do it, said Eleanor. She stood at the bottom of the stairs to the beach and waved to Suki. And Suki's up here at the top of the stairs and she looks a little bit afraid to come down to the beach, doesn't she? But Suki was just a small dog and the stairs were big and sandy and she hadn't had lunch yet and her foot hurt a little and she might get a shell stuck up her nose and she might tumble down on her head and then she'd need stitches and besides there might be lobsters. So Suki sat at the top of the stairs with Chunka Munka by her side. That's her pet monkey. Oh, all right, said Eleanor. She picked them both up with a tisk and a huff and carried them down the stairs. So she went and got them and carried them down the stairs. Come on, Suki, you can do it, said Eleanor. She tossed a beach ball Suki's way. Do you think she's going to play? No. But Suki was just a small dog, and the beach ball was big and beachy, and it might hit her nose, and then it would pop, and it might be too loud, or it might knock her down, and she might never get up again, and she might have to live on the beach forever and eat seaweed to survive. And besides, beach balls might attract lobsters, and we know she's afraid of lobsters. So Suki sat far away from the beach ball with Chunkamunka, at her side. Oh, Suki, Eleanor swooped that pup up with a tisk and a huff and cradled her in her arms. Come on, Suki, you can do it. Eleanor stood at the water's edge and splashed a little splash at Suki. We do that at the beach. We splash. Can you splash each other at the beach? Yeah. But Suki was just a small dog, and those waves were big, and they were whooshy, and they were salty and they were too wet, and they might toss her out in the middle of the sea, and she might float all the way to Tasmania, or even Florida. And she might be swallowed up by a whale, and she wasn't wearing a bathing suit, and besides, there might be lobsters. <laughs> so Suki sat at the edge of the water with Chunkamunka at her side. Oh, Suki, said Eleanor. She shook her head and dove into the waves. So she's going in without her. And she's sitting here watching. 
Suki sat and watched, beach balls bouncing and big boys running and umbrellas flapping and lifeguards blowing loud whistles and waves splish splashing with Chunkamunka. See all the people are playing in the water? And Chunkamunka, what happened to Chunkamunka? He floated out into the water. He floated out to sea. Suki barked for Chunkamunka to come back. But Chunkamunka started to sink. You think Chunkamunka can swim? No. I don't think so. Suki started to paddle. She paddled past a big beach ball and through a huge salty wave and over something that might even be a lobster. So she's getting very brave, isn't she? Until she had Chunkamunka. He was safe and Suki had saved him. She felt braver than the bravest dog because even though she was very small, Chunkamunka was even smaller. Oh, Suki, I knew you could do it, said Eleanor. She picked them both up with a yay and a hooray and swung them very gently through the air. Suki sat in the sandy sand with the wavy waves and watched for lobsters with Chunkamunker by her side. What are they building? And they didn't see a lobster all day. So she was safe. She never had a problem with a lobster, right? So that was good. What made, what made um, Suki go in the water? Because the monkey floated in. Right. Right, she needed to save the monkey. That's right, that's right. Well, the next book I bought is called Beach Feet. What do you feel between your toes when you go to the beach? Sand. Sand, do you like to do that? Do you like to wiggle your toes in the sand? Yeah. Is that fun to do? Do you like that? Well, that's what this is about. It's about all the things we feel with our feet <laughs> on the beach. And it's called Beach Feet. Arg! I want to run, but my flip-flops keep sinking. I know, I'll kick them off. When you go down to the beach and you have your flip-flops and you just want to get rid of them. Ow! The sand is burning hot. That happens to me. Ow, ow, ow! I have to run quickly into the water to cool off his feet. Ah, the wet sand feels good, cool and soft. Look, here comes a wave. Splash! It's loud and cold and big. I like it. Swoosh! The wave is going back. It's going out and taking the sand with it. The sandy ripples tickle my toes. I know what that feels like. Hmm, what's this? I've stepped on something hard. What could it be? A shell. Look, I found a shell. You were right. Uh-oh, here comes another wave. It's gigantic. Splash. Now that the ocean is calm again, I can float on the waves. Look, I'm floating just like a jellyfish. She's in the, the tube and she's floating. I like to wiggle my toes in the water. Uh-oh, I can't touch the bottom. Wait, wait, I think I can on my tippy toes. Anyway, I know how to swim. Splish, splash, splish, splash. She looks like she's falling out of the tube. Yum. Now I feel the sun on my feet. They are very happy. They are toasty and warm. She's all she buried herself in the sand. You think she likes sand? I think so. I think so. I've done that at the beach. Have you ever had yourself buried yourself in the sand at the beach? Yeah, that's fun to do, isn't it? 
Yeah, that's fun. Well, this is a story about Scaredy Squirrel. Have you ever read any of the other Scaredy Squirrel books? I've seen one at school. Yeah, they're fun. And Scaredy Squirrel does all kinds of does all kinds of fun adventures. Well, this is Scaredy Squirrel goes to the beach. So let's see what Scaredy Squirrel is up to at the beach. Let's see what happens. Scaredy Squirrel never goes to the beach. He'd rather vacation at home alone where it's safe and there's no risk of being surrounded by the wrong crowd. Let's see what he's afraid of. A few crowds that Scary Squirrel wouldn't want to be caught in the middle of are seagulls. Let's think about all the things you see at the beach. He doesn't like seagulls. He doesn't like jellyfish, and some beaches have jellyfish. He doesn't like sea monsters. <laughs> I've never seen a sea monster. Falling coconuts. I don't think they, there's no coconuts at my beach. Packs of pirates or mobs of lobsters. So those are why, that's why Scaredy Squirrel doesn't go to the beach. He doesn't like those things. So he's perfectly happy to build his own very private beach. So let's see how he makes his beach. Scaredy Squirrel's Guide to Building a Safe Beach. Let's see what he gets. You will need some paper and crayons, a stick, an inflatable pool, a flashlight, kitty litter, and a plastic flamingo. One of those big pink birds people put in front of the house. First, he drew a picture of the beach. Then he used a stick to hold it up so you could see it. Then he covered the ground with sand. He used the kitty litter for sand. Then he inflated his water, a tube to hold the water. He turned on his flashlight for sunshine and he took the make-believe pink flamingo to be the birds you find at the beach. So he was creative, wasn't he? And now he's going to enjoy it. It looks like a beach and feels like a beach, but it doesn't sound like a beach. Scaredy Squirrel noticed something's missing, the soothing sound of the ocean. What do you hear when you're at the ocean? What are you hearing? Yeah, that, that swishing sound of the water going back and forth. Yep, so his solution was to get a seashell. Have you ever had one of those seashells that you put up to your ears? And what do you hear? You hear the ocean in the seashell? Yeah, I have one of those. He made a quick trip to the real beach to find a seashell. Now he wanted his seashell to be germ-free. He wants a clean <laughs> seashell. He wants it to be shiny. And he wants it to have the perfect ocean sound. And what lives in these curly shells, do you know? Um, what kind of a animal lives in there? A snail. A snail, that's right. Good for you. He wants it to have no snail. He does not want a snail in his shell. But how is he going to travel to the beach? That's going to take careful planning. So first, he decides to draw a map of how to get to the beach. So here's his map. Here he is, and he decides that he's going to hitch a ride on the mail truck. And the mail truck is going to, I guess, deliver mail to the beach. And here's where he's going to find the seashell. So first, he's going to get picked up by the mail truck, arrive at the beach, and wait until the coast is clear. There's no one around. Then he's going to look, and he's going to find his seashell. Then he's going to get back in the truck and come home. So he'll be all set. Do you think his plan is going to work? No. Now here are all the things he doesn't want to see. Here are the seagulls, the coconuts, <laughs> the lobsters, the jellyfish, the sea monsters, and the pirates. So he's got to avoid all those things when he goes to the beach. He also has to get dressed. What do you wear on the beach? Um, a swimsuit. A swimsuit. Let's look at what Scaredy Squirrel is putting on to go to the beach. First, he's going to put on a helmet to protect his head from the falling coconuts. Then he's going to put on an eye patch so he looks like one of the pirates. Then he's going to put on his um, a camera so he can take pictures while he's there. 
Then he's going to have a compass so he doesn't get lost. He's going to have a French fry. Who's he going to give the French fry to? The seagulls. The seagulls. That's right. So in case the seagulls come, he can give them a French fry. And he's got his oven mitts because he doesn't want to get germs, remember, from the seashell. And he's got a rubber band to protect themselves from the lobster. So if a lobster comes, he can put the rubber band around their claw. So is he all ready to go? That's not the way I go to the beach, huh? All right, so the next morning he gets up early. He gets into the mail truck and he goes to the beach. And there he is. He comes out of the mail truck. He's in a little packing box. And all of a sudden he sees a huge crowd. Look at all the people at this beach. So does, is he alone at the beach? No, he's not alone at all. And people are not part of his plan. So what does a bunny do when it doesn't want you to see him? What does he do? Um, runs away. They run away. Some of them run away. Some of them lay perfectly still and pretend you can't see them. That's what Scaredy Squirrel does. That's called playing dead. You just lay there like this. So that's what he does. He waits 30 minutes. He waits an hour. He waits for two hours. But the people didn't go away. Finally, Scaredy Squirrel realizes that the perfect seashell is right under his nose, what lands on him, right there. He's surrounded by friendly people and he decides to join the crowd and have fun. So he builds sand castles with the children. He takes pictures of the families. He floats around in the ocean. He sunbathes with all the other people. And he forgets all about the flock of seagulls, the tribes of jellyfish, the herds of sea monsters, the packs of pri pirates, and the tons of falling coconuts and the mobs of lobsters. He's glad to be part of the crowd and have fun at the beach. Back home, after a day of fun in the sun, Scaredy Squirrel's inspired to make one more important addition to his beach picture. What do you think he's going to add to his picture of the beach? Um, the picture that he took of um, the family. Maybe, yeah. The people. That's right. You were right. The crowd. All the people that he met at the beach. So all the things he was afraid of, he didn't have to be afraid of, right? Because he ended up having fun at the beach. So if you can find other Scaredy Squirrel books at the library when you go, they're very good. And he has all kinds of adventures. The next book I bought, what's good to, I know you, I know a lot of people really like to eat this. What is this a picture of? Watermelon. watermelon. I love watermelon because watermelon in the summertime when it's hot is very refreshing, isn't it? Do you eat the seeds? What do you do with the seeds? The black seeds I just you pick them out? Well, this is a story about a watermelon seed, and we're going to see what happens to Alligator. And the name of this book is The Watermelon Seed by Greg Pozzoli. Let's see what happens. I love watermelon, he says. Chomp, chomp, chomp. It's the best. Ever since I was a teeny tiny baby crocodile, it's been my favorite. Chomp, 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 slurp, chomp. I like it for breakfast. I like it for lunch. I like a big salty slab for dinner. And I love it for dessert. How about that? I love watermelon. Gulp. He gulped it down. I just swallowed a seed. Uh-oh. What happens if you swallow a watermelon seed? Anything? Mm, I, I swallowed one, but it wasn't a black one. No, one of the white ones? Well, he swallowed one. Let's see what happens. I swallowed a seed. He's screaming. He doesn't know what to do. It's growing in my guts. <laughs> Soon vines will come out my ears, he thinks. Look at him. He looks so afraid. My stomach will stretch. My skin will turn pink. I don't want to be in a fruit salad. <laughs> <laughs> S 
Somebody please help me. Oh, he's crying. Oh no, I can feel it growing inside me. It's happening right now. My stomach feels funny. Grumble, 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 grumble. And he makes a loud burp. Oh, here's the seed. Uh-oh. That was too close. No more melon for me. Never again. He decides he's not going to eat watermelon ever again. Well, maybe just a teeny tiny bite. Chomp, chomp, chomp. And there he is. Do you think he gave up watermelon? No, I couldn't give up watermelon either because it's so <laughs> delicious. It's so delicious. Well, the next book I bought, sometimes when you go to the beach, what's outside the beach? Sometimes they have what kinds of things for you to play on? Playgrounds. They have a playground. That's right. Often there's a playground right outside the beach. And in a playground, a lot of times you find a seesaw. Do you like to go on the seesaw? Yeah. What's important on a seesaw? What do you have to do? You have to have balance. You have to balance. That's right. That's right. Well, this is a story about giraffe. Giraffe wants to play on the seesaw. So let's see what happens when giraffe tries to play on the seesaw. And these are all his friends. He has a friend, Kitty. He has a friend, Monkey. He has a friend, Moose. He has giraffe. He has a friend, Rabbit. And he has a friend, Dog. So let's see how these friends work together to have fun on the seesaw. The name of this book is The Seesaw. I'm going to the playground, Giraffe says. I'm going to have lots of fun. At the playground, Giraffe takes a look around. What will he do first? I don't really feel like swinging or sliding, he thinks. I know. I want to play on the seesaw. Oh, but wait. I can't play by myself. I can only play on the seesaw with someone else. Just then, Moose, Mouse comes by. Maybe she'll want to play on the seesaw with Giraffe. And there's a little teeny mouse. Hi, Mouse, said Giraffe. Will you play on the seesaw with me? Sure, says Mouse. That sounds like fun. Upsy daisy Mouse hops onto the seesaw. Uh-oh, says Mouse. I think you're too heavy. Look, I can't go down. I'm not too heavy, Giraffe says. You're too light. I can't go up. Mouse scrambles down from the seesaw. Then she sees Monkey. There's Monkey, Mouse says. He's bigger and heavier than I am. Why not ask Monkey to play on the seesaw with you? Let's see what happens with Monkey. Hi, Monkey, says Giraffe. Will you play on the seesaw with me? Sure, says Monkey. That sounds like fun. Alley-oop. Monkey leaps onto the seesaw. Uh-oh, says Monkey. I think you're too heavy. Look, I can't go down. Not even when I jump. I'm not too heavy, Giraffe says. You're too light. Look, I can't go up. I have an idea, says Monkey, standing on his seat. There's Dog. He's bigger and stronger than I am. Why not ask Dog to play on the seesaw with you? Let's see what happens. Hi, Dog, calls Giraffe. Will you play on the seesaw with me? Sure. Dog wags his tail. That sounds like fun. Heave ho. Dog climbs onto the seesaw. Oh, says Dog, I think you're too heavy. Look, I can't go down. I'm not too heavy, Giraffe says. You're too light. Look, I can't go up. Giraffe looked very sad. I guess I can't play on the seesaw with anyone. Mouse, Monkey, and Dog want to help their friend. And they devise a plan. What do you think they can do? You think? Let's see what happens. Together, you are so smart. We're not too light, Monkey says happily, and Giraffe's not too heavy. Sh shout Dog and Mouse. Hooray, cheers Giraffe. All together, 
We can do it. See you again soon. Those are all his friends. So they had a really good idea. They all helped Giraffe. So you think he ended up having a fun day at the park? Yeah. I think so. I think that was fun. That was a great idea. All right. Well, the last book I brought is about pancakes and French toast. What's your favorite? What do you prefer? What's your favorite? Do you like pancakes or French toast? Pancakes is your favorite? Mm -hmm. What do you like? Fr pancakes or French toast? French toast? Well, it's kind of a toss up for Nan. I like them both. But we're going to see who ends up to be <laughs> the favorite. We're going to see. This story is called Lady Pancake and Sir French Toast. We're going to see who is the favorite breakfast in this story. And this has really colorful pictures. Deep in the fridge, and it kind of rhymes, so listen for the rhymes. Deep in the fridge and behind the green peas, way past the tofu and left of the cheese, the leftover friends were as close as could be until they heard news from their neighbor, Miss Brie. Brie is a kind of cheese. The syrup is almost completely all gone. A single drop's left, just a drop, she went on. Are pancakes and French toast good without syrup? Not too good, huh? I like the syrup on mine. The last drop is mine, Lady Pancake conversed, but French Toast replied, not if I get there first. Like that he was off and the race had begun, with Pancake behind breaking into a run. Off they go and get the syrup. Who's going to win, do you think? What's your guess? Um, Who's going to win, Pancake or, or French Toast? French Toast. You think French Toast is going to win? You agree? All right, let's see. Through broccoli forest and past orange juice fountain, they climbed to the top of Potato Mash Mountain. Pushing and shoving, they fought for the lead. Toast behind Pancake, who rolled at high speed. So Pancake can roll, so they might, she may win. Let's see, because that's, that's an advantage. She screeched to a stop at the edge of the shelf, clutching a grapevine to steady herself. Toast didn't notice and couldn't quite stop, plummeting down into jam with a plop. He scraped himself off and yelled up, you're a meanie, as Pancake re reapplied down a rope of linguine. <laughs> she bragged, I'm the best of all breakfast food treats, then hurled a lime and skipped over two beets. There's all kinds of stuff in this refrigerator. I am, thought Toast, but his chances looked bleak, so Toast took a shortcut down Sauerkraut Peak. Skiing past spinach and artichoke dip, Toast vaulted high in the air with a flip. Nearing the edge, he tried one final jump, but stumbled and fell way below with a thump. Pancake made use of her seafaring skills and sailed across oceans of soup causing spills. But chili lagoons slathered pancake in muck, and then at a fork in the road, she was stuck. Don't go that way, yelled a chickpea to warn her, but pancake sped on and got trapped in a corner. Caught behind dressings, one Russian, one ranch, she squeezed out and started a bean avalanche. <laughs> All the beans are falling. Look at her face. Toast reemerged in the vegetable bin, sneaking up swiftly, not making a whisper. Beans were now falling from such a great height. Some kidney, some lima, some pinto, some white. Those are all different kinds of beans. Searching for safety from raining legumes, Toast turned to hide, but was blasted by fumes of Brussels sprouts left from an old party platter. So quickly he climbed up a celery ladder. Beside him a lettuce leaf parachute landed. Pancake 
flipped out. It is mine, she demanded. She wanted the parachute. Battered and soggy, exhausted and crumbling, too tired to push, they were limping and stumbling. They're exhausted. What's this? Syrup. The syrup. There stood the bottle of syrup at last. But wait, it was empty. They stood quite aghast. They got there too late. It's empty. Who ate it? Who had the syrup? What's left that you might have for breakfast with syrup? There's pancakes, French toast. What's left? What's the third thing you might put syrup on? Can you think? Let's see. I can have a guess. Licking his lips with a sneer that was awful. What rhymes with awful? Waffle. Out of the shadows crept Baron Von Waffle. <laughs> I got here first while you boasted and bickered. My, was that syrup delicious, he snickered. So he got there first while they were racing and bickering and fighting. With one evil laugh, Waffles, Waffles slipped out of sight. The syrup was gone, no more reason to fight. Trudging back home beneath layers of grime, look at how dirty they got, Toast said, perhaps we should not fight next time. Agreed, replied Pancake, as friends we should share. Hey, look, we can split up that butter right there. Mmm, butter is good on that stuff too, right? And there they are, having their, having their, using their butter. And there's all the stuff in the refrigerator. What a messy refrigerator, huh? Look at all the stuff they've got. The end. And their shopping list says they need to buy more syrup. It's on their shopping list. Okay. Well, I'm so glad you guys came today, and thank you for coming. And we want to thank Liz at the White Lamb Bookstore for letting us come here and, and have our episode of, of Storytime with Winnie and Nan. And for you guys, what I brought is I brought you all a pail and shovel so that when you go to the beach, you can take this with you and you can remember being here with Nan. So thank you so much. <laughs>